Hi, my name is Amber Ross, and I am here today to talk about the employment discrimination for people with criminal records. Um, there are two establishments that govern this, and one is the Federal Trade Commission, which um, enforces federal law that regulates background reports for employment. The second is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which enforces federal laws against employment discriminations. Now, some of the programs that have been set up by the EEOC are the um, Strategic Enforcement Plan, which eliminates barriers in recruitment and hiring, so no channeling or steering of applicants. Channeling or steering of applicants is considered um, targeted screening, where employers automatically eliminate a group of people for a job, such as requiring a clear or clean record, criminal record. Um, the technical definition would be a neutral policy that disproportionately screens out or disadvantages Title VII protected individuals and does not relate to the job in question and is not consistent with business necessity. Another um, Another term to become familiar with is disparate treatment liability, which treats certain um, applicants differently, for, such as um, doing a background check differently for one individual than you would for another. So what can employers do and what can they not do? Well, first, employers are allowed to do background checks and they are allowed to ask you about those background checks results um, what they are not allowed to do is do background checks without your authorization, without notifying you first. Um, it's, employers typically use third-party reporting agencies, which unfortunately provides them sometimes with inaccurate information. Um, when these reports come back, the EEOC in April 2012 regulated criminal um, history guidelines in details it detailed the use of criminal history in hiring processes there's three parts to this the first is the nature of the crime the second is the time since the crime had been committed and three was the nature of the job being sought in relevance to the criminal history however many questions still remain on this because there wasn't a time frame given there wasn't more details given by the EEOC when these guidelines were put out, so many employers are left to, to their own judgment. Um, so another example of when it's illegal for an employer to do back, different background check requirements is when they require different background checks depending on your race, national origin, color, sex, religion, disability, genetic information, or possibly even your age. So discrimination occurs if an employee's, employer's policy of disqualifying applicants or employees with a criminal record disproportionately affects members of protected groups. That employer could possibly face discrimination charge. And what's important to remember as well is that there is a difference between an arrest record and a conviction record, although both are, have inaccurate information. Unfortunately, because many criminal um, records have these reliable, unreliable information, the three eyes rule by senior attorney advisor at the EEOC, Tanisha Wilburn, um, they're good to follow. They are first, innocent until proven guilty policy, uh, no proof of criminal conduct, merely an allegation. Second, incomplete, many records, they, they lack the details what happened after the arrest and inaccurate. Um, many records report arrests for the wrong person, mistaken identity. Others continue to report records that were expunged. So um, according to the EEOC, as the number of employees, employers doing criminal background checks increases, so does the number of people with criminal records. In 2009, more than 7.3 million adults have been or have had some contact with the criminal justice system. This includes probationers, parolees, and jail inmates. 
In 2008, ex-prisoners made up 1 in 33 of working-aged adults. Ex-felons made up 1 in 15 working-age adults. Um, arrest records are, arrest and incarceration rates are particularly high for African-Americans and Hispanic men. African-Americans and Hispanics are arrested at a rate that is two to three times their, more proportionate than the general population. Uh, assuming that in current incarceration rates remain unchanged, about 1 in 17 white men are expected to serve time in prison during their lifetime. By contrast, the rate climbs to 1 in 6 for Hispanic men and 1 in 3 for African American men. So, um, second, if the employer thinks it, they decide that they're not going to hire you because of something on the report, they must give you a copy of the report and a notice of your rights that tells you um, how to contact the company that made the report because you could correct the information given. And this is because the background checks are so inaccurate sometimes. Um, there is a new civil rights movement called uh, Ban the Box, which literally means to ban the box on the applications where it checks do you have a criminal history record. Now, the civil rights movement is um, aimed at changing applications so that employers consider a job and a job candidate's qualifications first without the stigma of a conviction or an arrest record. Um, about 10 states, including uh, California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Illinois, Massachusetts, Minnesota, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Vermont, have mandated the removal of the conviction history questions from job applications for private employers, a change that advocates the embrace as the next step to the evolution of this um, policies. Now, I believe that people with criminal records is kind of like a catch-22 because they, a lot of them do want to better themselves. In fact, I have several friends that have trouble finding employment that have turned their lives completely around, but it's that one thing on their criminal record that holds them back. Um, I really do think that this is an issue that should be looked at with more concern nowadays, considering how easily accessible criminal records are. Thank you.